think a little a little more practical. A lot of libraries implement a zip type. So I think like Lambda, uh, Ramda has one, Lodash has one. If you want to be able to have the values of the zipped thing be, well, match what your inputs are, then you would use something like this. So we could use uh, we could use this in a sort of real life situation. So yeah, similar summit setup to before. Um, we're going to have these tests up here, and they show us kind of what happens. So like let's sh let's show this one. So we have one and two, and then we have true and false. What we get back is like the first element of this one, and this in the first element of the of the second one, and then we get the second element, and then second element. So they kind of like fan together like that, sort mm -hmm. of how they work. If we have missing elements, then we just we can just skip them. There's nothing left to zip. So yeah, uh, this one is cool because it it uses. Uh, do you okay? So starting out, does this feel more practical because this is a thing you may have used or seen in libraries? It it feels more practical in that sense, yes. But it feels less practical in the sense that I would like the type definition to come from the code that I wrote, not from. A crazy type layer like this, and I would prefer to rock inference over defining these types, yeah, even if would, the resulting yeah. type is less accurate. Totally, yeah. So in the case of a real life use case, you wouldn't have a type; you would have a function that would use mm -hmm. this generic, and it would infer t and u from the two arrays that you pass as inputs, and all of it would get inferred. So we're going to write something that would be exactly fitting that use case you just mentioned. Everything would yeah. be inferred. I almost. Something I would love to see is somebody doing the type challenges, but instead of writing the type def for everything, the type def's inferring from a function that actually solves the problem. Uh, I really agree with you. There are a few, I can show you some, there are a few that exactly work that way. Like for instance, there's one that's for promise.all that you don't actually define a type, you define like promise.all and it takes the types of all of the promises you pass into the input array, and it, in, including recursively. So if you have like a promise that resolves to a promise that resolves to a promise, it'll unpack all of that and give you back a type of like, here is the array of all the things that your promise that all will, will resolve. And you can go like, you know, into the second element, and it's going to be that type. Um, not dot all settled? Uh, not, not, no, no, there's no, there's nothing for dot all settled. Uh, dot all is cursed. Yeah, dot all, I, I, uh, I just did the, uh, I do shorts for all of these every day, and I just did the one for promise that all the other day, and I couldn't help but mention at the beginning of it that like promise that all is not a way of doing parallelism, which I think is a thing that a lot of people hit. I hit at some point, and uh, it's it's an easy trap to fall into. So okay, oh no. this is the this is the we're the getting setup. into our nested tuples. Right, we have our nested tuples. Uh, we have to we have to do something here. So here we go. Okay. So what this syntax says is we're, we're iterating. I mean, there's no other way from like a comp complexity. Yeah, so we have T and U, and we now know that uh, or that we have a T and a U. So the, the thing that I'm thinking through right now, like obviously what like we would do an array with like T head, U head yep, yep. in here. But the thing that I'm trying to figure out is how do we get like the values that we had before for the recursive call here. So like we just we can just pass them through. Yeah, T tail and U tail would go here, but uh mm -hmm. that's it. Oh yeah. I guess that is it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I was I don't I I don't know why I recursively thought so incorrectly there. Like I cared about like the before because I don't. I care about the before and the response here. Right. That makes sense. And what's cool about this syntax and what is at least nice about the way this plays out is that when you get into these situations, when I first read this challenge, I was like, damn, like what how am I going to handle the case where there's like uneven dispersion where like they don't match? It's going to return for that case of the recursion, it's going to return an empty tuple if both of these things don't both have something for T head and U head. Now this can be an mm -hmm. empty tuple, which is what's going to happen at the very last element of each. So that's fine because this would then like spreading an empty tuple spreads to nothing and then it goes away and then we're done. But mm -hmm. you don't have to do any work in TypeScript because of the how powerful the inferencing is here. It's pretty clean and you don't have to care about um the rest of it. You know, it's it's pretty straightforward. And it handles so this is this example here is showing us that the value this just this is an array with one thing in it and the one thing is an array or is a tuple, right? 
And so this is showing us that this system that we built here will handle arbitrarily comp like so instead of this I could put an object and I could say like a one or something and it would work just fine to zip those two things together. Yeah, that's cool. Yep. This one's the the most practical, but I still hate nested ternaries. Are there any examples of doing this without a nested ternary? Yeah, let's. Uh, I don't think so, but let's look. I have a bunch of them here. So here's another one. Um, this one has like they use A and B. This uses an accumulator. Mm -hmm. I wanted to show this example because a lot of times when you solve a bunch of these challenges, there's a lot of tricks you have to resort to, like this temporary storage business, just to like store up an accumulator and like pass it through with the. See, this is being passed here as the third argument. Um, mm -hmm. There's actually usually a way around it. Like when you're doing like reverse or you're doing zip or you're doing stuff like this. I would say to people out there, if you see this, uh, it sometimes is required. There's no other way to do it, but a lot of times it isn't. And if you're dealing with like uh, data structures, like just tuples, uh, you can do what we did in the in the previous example and not have to worry about it. This one checks whether or not the length extends the union of the two lengths of the inputs, which I think is kind of clever because it's it does exactly because of that. It achieves what you were just asking for. We're not. Uh, actually, we're not iterating at all. We're just grabbing the first values, or we're grabbing the values at this position. So they're they're abusing the fact that when the accumulator starts, the the length of it is zero. So a indexed with zero is the first element. A and if we go again another recursion level that deep, a indexed with one is that. So this one does it without any looping. It's this is like a pedant. I guess it's not pedantic. It's actually a thing that I would argue matters. If this was my code, I like this solution, but there's one change I would make, which is I would have. Mm -hmm. Yep. I would not let users have access to that. Amen. Yeah. And then we can just literally do this. Change this to internal zip. That to internal zip. That uh, and. And just get rid of all that junk. You're right, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yep, all the tests pass. Better. Perfect. Yeah, and I, I love not that too. exposing that weirdness. Yeah, because what can happen is like, it's hard from a consumer standpoint to look at a type and know like, oh, are they expecting like what is what the hell is ACC? I mean, if you've done this kind of stuff before, you know ACC stands for accumulator and whatever. It's probably not something you're supposed to pass. But if you just block it like you did here, I love what you did. If you block it from being used by the you know outside world, then there's no chance for that kind of breakage to occur. Because if somebody passes a value to this third argument, it's like a weird behavior will happen no matter what, because it's not. It needs to loop in order for the function to work. Yep. Um, this is the last one I found. Uh, let's let's just rename this to zip one or something. Uh, cool. So this this one here is the last one I found. It's really clever because it achieves the same thing. This, so this is I'm excited to show you this because yeah, this, this is, is I was wondering if there was a syntax for this specifically yep. of grabbing the head and the tail at the same time, which means it doesn't have to be nested anymore, which is really nice. I this is my favorite. Yeah, this is uh, I wrote I didn't I didn't put it here, but uh, in in my comments to myself I wrote beautiful, <laughs> but this is a uh, this is a cool thing and a cool example of what I was telling before that. We built this structure on the fly. We built a tuple that has T and U in it, which are our inputs. And then we inferred a nested tuple from inside of that and then grabbed these four values all at once. So it's a little it's a little tricky, but it's also really powerful and it, it reduces the complexity, like you were saying. So I, this is a cool, yeah. this is a really cool solution. I, I can feel my CPU fan spinning, and I was already <laughs> recording a 4K video, which says a lot about how good this is for the TypeScript server. But uh, well, uh, yeah, it is it is a fun time doing some of the extreme challenges because uh, like. I've hit many situations where I feel like the solution should work, like I don't know what the bug is, and it's because the language server crashed and it's just hung or it's like <laughs> looping infinitely, and I have to restart the window or restart this language server and all of a sudden everything, all the tests pass. That's happened to me a couple times. Oh well. Um, when you start doing recursion like this, there is a check in TypeScript that will uh, error. If you hit, like I think it's a thousand levels of recursion, it will tell you this is uh, like excessive recursion, possibly infinite. Probably you're doing something wrong and usually you're doing something wrong. So yeah, this is a really cool one. I'm going to do a video after all this is over on like the 10 most beautiful solutions. And this is actually one of them because it solves the problem in an interesting way. And it shows, it demonstrates the power of, of what you can put on the right side of the extends.
keyword here. Can I make so, one change before you use this yeah, one? Please. <laughs> you know what I'm doing. I know what you're doing. Yeah. Here. Uh, yeah, I'll get the bottom ones. Um, I don't think we can both do it at the same time. And that's L tail. Oh, oh, yeah. Sorry. No, yeah. This one. Sorry. But see, this is why like we do this because you didn't even notice you were thinking of this slightly differently than it actually is. Yep. Um, I, I clicked actually the wrong thing saw. in fairness, but yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, it is much better to do this way. And, uh, I sometimes worry that <laughs> I'm promoting bad habits by showing it with short, like short characters, but it is genuinely difficult to get them to fit sometimes. So, oh, well, but well, that's what I'm here to do. Complain about you. the Thank types you. being unreadable unless you, you yeah, actually give them names. It. And here we go. Um, this is a solution I would be okay with in a code review because I can actually read it. Unlike the others where I have to think too much. Yeah, this one is is clever, but it's maybe too clever. I think it's like this mm -hmm. uh, this last one here strikes a nice balance. So cool.